Jen, Jen Stone, where are you, Jen? Jen Stone, come call me, Jen. Jen Stone, you are so wonderful. Aww. Hey! That made my whole day. I love starting off with a song with that a Jen. That was fantastic. Like, I, felt, I felt so like serenaded. That was so nice. I sing it's my, so lovely. I, sing I don't think a man wife. has ever sang to me. Well, I, I, I sing in French, too. Aww. Pretend well, that's French. That's even better. We would oh, do pretend, pretend, pretend Italian, French. pretend French. We had a family friend, Joe Sicari, who... Mm-hmm. Who would just? But no, that guy said, "But that, that, hey, but oh, ma, ma, ba, ba, yeah, ba, ding, ba, 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 you know." Yeah, it's like old S. I don't think they do it anymore, but like old SNL, like if they if they would do another language, I think there was one. There was like a, um, I think it was a Japanese office, and I don't think it would fly anymore. Oh, no. But it, like they did, they well, did but, kind of like fake well, Japanese. But, yeah, well, Belushi uh, uh, did yeah. the samurai, and he. <laughs> yeah. You know, cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Okay, so we went to Paris. Yeah, it's so one of my favorite cities. Have you been there with the the Sacred Heart Church, the Sacre Bleu, at the very top? I don't think, no, 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 the, no. I haven't been. And I people been to that. sit at, on these stairs, yeah. and there's tourists and everybody walking around, but people just sit there and like mm-hmm. have a baguette and do French stuff. Um, and <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> there is a like French mime who would walk around, who would like follow I, I people. I don't like clowns. Like, I don't like but mimes. But he would go, like if there's two people walking uh, close to each other, like he would sneak up and kind Mimic of just them. hold, well, no, hold one of their hands until nope. they don't, you know, because if you're walking to someone and you're looking forward, you're not going to see. So I started doing that. I got a French beret and I started doing clown stuff. Okay, I love that you mentioned clowns and mimes, which I know mimes and clowns are very different Sorry. to the mime community, but- they're in the same universe, right? Okay. I hate clowns so much. So the idea oh, of even a mime coming up and grabbing my hand, like, bleh, like clowns just are- absolutely not. But the idea of you in a beret and a striped shirt brings me joy. And it's Adorable. very funny how like I went from sheer disgust and terror <laughs> to like, oh, David's holding my hand with a beret on. It was so fun just to be silly. And I was like directing traffic, oh my you God. know? I would have um, loved to have seen that. I would have loved like your old Pratt fall videos if you had done it. Like, uh, well, if everybody wants, if, if you want to see it, just David Deloise slips and falls, Pratt falls. No, but the mimes. I want to see you as a mime. Oh uh, no, I didn't film you that. You should have. That everybody was, films everything. You didn't film it. What the I didn't hell? Film it. I'm sorry. You film it. Mm. Go I back feel- to Paris and film it. <laughs> I, I get so bossy with you. I'm sorry. It's okay, Jen Stone. So we're doing a and a episode today. What? Nobody told me. I know. Surprise. I didn't get the memo. Well, here it is right now. Here's the memo, sir. I, I, I'm going to start off with a question for you, oh, okay. Jen Stone. Why do you hate clowns? What happened to you? No, no, no. I get it. Clowns <laughs> scare the They're fuck terrifying. out of me. Are you kidding? They're I, terrifying. Listen, you see a little clown or an old doll. Although uh, Yulia loves scary movies. and uh, I She wants to be one of the like... Oh yeah, the things loves, and like a paranormal uh, yes, reenactment. You guys yeah. have that in common that we. Well, I don't want to lo- be one of the things. I oh just love a paranormal. I'm doing show. a shout out, you Zach from Ghost Adventures. <laughs> we heart you, and I'm going to say something <laughs> yeah. that this is literally the truth. There's 25 seasons of Ghost Adventures, yes. and we've watched every single episode. But, and I'm going to tell you something. Yes, Zach. I do a great imitation of you, uh, and we um, we love watching you. He's amazing, and Aaron, yeah. uh, the crew. I like the, oh Aaron's the one. Aaron's I'm getting goosebumps. I would love to so meet them. I could, hold on, hold on. There's a cold spot. Right oh yeah, here. no, no, right here. There's, hold right, on. That's what it's they do. Cold. My favorite though, because cool. the reason, guys, I'm getting so excited because this is literally Yulia, David, and I. Whenever I go down to see them in Malibu, it's become our tradition yeah. that we watch an episode of what is it? Paranormal? What is it? It's ghost adventures. Ghost adventures. That's These are our ghost adventures. Ghost adventures with the glasses. And, uh, but Aaron's the one that always is like, I'm feeling rage. I love, it. I love all the guys. There's four guys yeah. that are the main well, guys that do it. you don't have to go through it. their resume. But you know what? I want to buy a scary haunted house just so I can have no. them come to my house. Do you understand? Like, I literally am holding out buying a house um, for a lot of reasons because the market's terrible. <laughs> yeah. No, but also too, like I just want, I was talking to somebody about how I want to get, what well, I was talking to, to one of our producers about how like I really just want to get like a 19, like a Victorian, like anywhere from the 1900s to like a 1930s, 40s house that's like super haunted. 
and I just want to live in it and be a little the little old lady that I am. And I haven't found like the perfect house yet. I love you, Jen, but this is scaring me a little bit. Well, I just want the is stick, it because I just you... want the ghost adventure stick figures to be in the corner. Okay, so have you ever encountered any kind of movement activity? I okay. oh, as Zach says, a uh, disembodied disembodied voice. Oh, no, not a disembodied voice. Oh shit! Did I um, I, oh, you have. I, I, I think that. I've told you this story, but I'll I'll share it with with the class with the masses. Um, but, um, I, so I, I shot this, this movie, I, I'm going to, I'm going to name drop, but you name drop all the time. So it's fine. But, um, it's okay. Listen, we're in show business. We know people. I know, but, but go ahead. I'm so going to drop the wand every time you say a name. Go oh ahead. Oh my God. Anne Heche. No, she was oh. in this movie though. Um, oh. no, uh, it was, uh, slash there it is. Um, he was doing the Rob zombie thing where he was like, uh, making horror movies. And I played this, I, I, it's called Nothing Left to Fear. Uh, it was a lot of fun to make, um, but I played like the monster that like kills my whole family. Because for some reason, I think we've talked about this. I after can't Wizards, see you as a monster. I can't see you as a monster. I've got a dark side, baby. Um, <laughs> no, but like literally after Wizards, like the first four jobs I did after Wizards was all me like killing my whole family. I don't oh. know what that was. It, I guess Harper, Harper was so <laughs> joyful <laughs> that I just had to go completely the other direction. I'm like, we got to get Jen Stone. Harper looks like she can kill people. No, literally. Everything was like, she's possessed by a demon, murders her whole family or like whatever. So my first four jobs were I was killing everybody. But um, after Wizards. Um, but so it was like this creature feature exorcism, whatever. But we shot in New Orleans and we shot in this house. Oh, yeah. That, there's a lot of activity yeah. there. Oh, and like I and I and I'm a weird kid. So like I, my, I, I grew up, my brother loves history. So we would go to like like cemeteries and he'd love to see like the the time frames and see like the, find the oldest tombstone so i just like grew up like walking in cemeteries because i'm just a weirdo and so i would go to new orleans and like walk through the cemeteries and everyone was like don't do that you're gonna take something home with you yeah because spirits sometimes can attach yeah, yeah, to yeah. you or to objects and zach stuff. knows all about that oh god i love Zach. but so the experience that i had so i started doing um like research because like I do for every role of like demonic whatever right. and then it got a little too much so I was like let me just put a pause on my research I've done enough I, I'm fine um and we were in this old house and there was a wall that had all of these crosses on it and they took them all down which I was like that's your first in the horror movie that's the first thing you don't do is take all the crosses down um but it was the scene I was supposed to like crawl up this wall there's a sliding closet door and uh, my makeup artist that was doing all the prosthetic makeup on me, um, they had drilled it into the floor because they didn't want it to rattle for sound. Uh -uh. And the first thing that happened was in this corner, it fell on her. So for some reason, with even all though these, it was even like though it was drilled into in, the ground wow. and it was, they drilled it in there. So it came off the thing and hit her in the head. She had to go to the hospital with a concussion. So we kept going because we only had the location for it's show business. You got to keep right. going. Like it was just very odd. So I, I did this thing where like I started kind of going up the wall and it was like an out of body experience where I was totally aware of everything that was happening to me in this corner, but I couldn't control anything that was happening. And then I like, and then my knees just like gave out. Like I went up this wall, I, I started doing these like weird things that I had not planned on doing, didn't feel like I was in control of doing. And then my body just like went limp. And I said to them, I was like, did you guys get this on camera? Like that was the weirdest thing. And they were like, let's like look like we were shooting. We should have. Please say yes. No, the camera completely cut to black, uh, completely cut out. And that happens to thing. everybody who doesn't know. I'm getting goosebumps right now. It's intense, Jen. It was, um, it was weird. I asked my it, parents. It was in it was in uh, New Orleans. And I asked my parents. I was like, can you? It was my first like location uh, shoot on my own. And I was like, can you please come down? So I was like, I'm a little freaked out. Basically, you got possessed while you were acting possessed. I don't know. Right? I've tried it like, especially like since like going to healthcare, I'm like trying to find like a medical reason of maybe I like vasovagal or like what is something. Vasovagal? It's, it's basically like if you stand up too fast or if like, uh, you get yeah, shocked or stress. Or, I'm vasovagal all the time. I get well, it. Yeah. Well, it's like Zeke and the show did that a lot. <laughs> oh, he he gets so excited and pass out. But that's what happens. Like if you get your blood drawn, you pass out or even right. if you take a shit too hard, you pass out. You know what I mean? That's like, not happened to me, anybody. But it's a so thing. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. So okay. like I try to like put like a, a logical reason behind it and I, and I just, it doesn't add up. It that's was it's really creepy. Um, well, let's we can move on to some questions, but yeah, I just yeah. Everyone's want like, everyone, I didn't realize this was a Ghost to know Adventures podcast. That you should watch Ghost Adventures. <laughs> it's an awesome show. It's Somewhere really Zach fun. Baggins is like, yeah. And Zach Baggins, if you're listening, 
I heart you and I uh, am a huge fan. I love that the I heart, like you just say I heart you all the time. Well, so Zach, sad. are you even you kidding well, no, but me? You say it about like you I say do a to little, me. Okay, I'm going to do a little like, imitation oh, yeah, of Zach. Just tell Please me, do. just Please tell do. me anything about what's going so on. So this house, um, there's just unexplained noises and the door closes randomly. So what you're saying is <laughs> in this house, doors close randomly. Yeah, yeah, all the time. All the time. <laughs> He, he does. He, he likes to repeat. I, I'm, he likes I'm doing to this. I, I know uh, imitation is the biggest form of flattery. Yes. And I, he, he repeats everything. This is a really good love letter to Zach Baggins. I think he's got uh, it. I do. So mm, I'm I love this question. Um, Christina Morrison asked, she asked it to Harper, but she goes, it goes for any character. Okay. She goes, how hard was it to play Harper who is positive, optimistic, and happy on days you weren't feeling like her? Ah, that's a and good that's, question. But that's a good question for both of us because yeah. how often, like all the time, you have to play characters that are in a headspace that you don't wake up in or naturally in or go to or whatever. I was going through a fucking child custody battle. Yeah, the, and having you know, to be so jovial and yeah. happy. And I mean, I know. got served papers on set yeah. by my ex-wife. It was a bad day. Not fun. No. And, and I think I've said this before, but my girlfriend couldn't get on set. She was always stopped for well, some the, reason at the, the door. The serving people are very talented. <laughs> yes, the people who serve. What you have to do when you're feeling bad is just set that aside and do your job. You know what I mean? Yeah. And And what's interesting is, uh, um, you know, going through a divorce or having trouble with your kids or having a pet die or whatever it is. As an actor, you can utilize that. Yeah. You know, it's, I don't be wanna... it's better to use it than to fight it. Howie Mandel did a talk show and... I did not know that he was a germaphobe at that time. Yeah. And I think he, he, you he know, was the not... first time I ever went to network was to play Howie Mandel's daughter. Oh, really? Small world. Well, Here, he was... we should. We should... He... And there, there you go. go. We just dropped the wand, everybody, because every time you say a famous name, you drop it. Okay, so <laughs> I do a joke yeah. where I come out of the bathroom and I tuck some toilet paper in the back of my pants. Okay. And then you have like a 10-foot oh, chain. Not, not the move with Right? Not but I did that to oh, enter. Oh, God, no. And I, and I, you know, got a laugh and then I shook his hand no. and everything. Oh. And the reason I said this is because on that episode, yeah. he said, I heard you can cry on crew. Cry, cry on, on crew. cue. And I did on the show. I was very proud of myself. Aww. You know, I, I think it takes a lot of focus uh, to play when you're a, a positive, optimistic character like Harper on days when you especially, and I really, like, I'll be perfectly honest and not to be a Debbie Downer, but, like, I really struggle with depression. I do. Like, I, and and I struggled with it a lot during Wizards, actually. Um, and I, there were times where Harper was kind of an escape. Like, I think of acting a lot of times as a catharsis, and if you can find that focus and tap into that person, um it can be a catharsis and an escape from yes. sometimes what you're going through. And, and like I said, I had some, I had some dark days and, and, and some depression that I really struggled with during wizards and Harper was my reprieve. Almost. Yeah. So, so was there uh it's intense. Um, like I said, I didn't mean to be Debbie Downer about it. But, but wait a minute. Didn't Debbie Downer, didn't she play your mom? She, no, she show? played future Harper. A future Harper. Rachel okay. Dratch. Yeah, yeah. She played the future best. Harper. Um, it's important to, you know, you're talking about being depressed. There's a, you know, Talking about being depressed is important, sharing that. And I love the fact that you were able to feel better by acting. Well, it's and, outlets. And yeah, it's, it's doing it's, that. It's, right. it's the importance of outlets. And, and it's, you know, and, and I think we've talked about this before about like taking things, keeping things from being taboo that should be normalized and things like that. But, right. But, and it's like, with, I love what Selena's is doing with mental health and just being honest about it and getting it out in the open of like, hey, look, even if if you're in a position where you seem like you have everything, it doesn't make you immune to struggling with some of these things. Yeah. And, and and it's something that like so many people go through and we feel like we have to go through it alone in the dark. Yeah. It's, and it's, well, you, when you're you depressed, don't. you don't feel like there's anybody there. You yeah, know? yeah. 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 Um, it's a very isolating um, and, thing. And I've been there and I, I have to say, I agree with you. It's so wonderful that Selena on her platform, on, yeah. her, on her, I mean, she has, she can reach so many people and the fact that she's talking about it yeah. means that there's probably so, a so little girl out there yeah, yeah, who might be unhappy or depressed. And because you and Selena are talking about this, yeah. will come out and talk about, uh, you know, but uh, it's, how they're feeling. It's which is worth important. being honest about to me in all facets of like your experience of life and, and things like that. It's worth being honest about it. And talking about it, if you can make one person feel less alone in, in their experience, yeah. because some some of these things, whether it be a chronic illness, whether it be a, you know mental health, whether it be 
a circumstance that you're going through, the worst thing in the world is feeling like you're the only one. Well, and and then, so to give, so to alleviate that, right, and to know that you're not is is worth all of it. Now being older, I see how many people go through yeah. very similar things to yeah. me, and there's the human there's condition a, is very repetitive. But but. but knowing someone else has been there and like, Oh, that yeah. happened to me too. Yeah. That camaraderie and we can talk about it now is really important. Mm -hmm. You know? All right, let's, shall we move yeah, on let, to let's, another let's question? Go, <laughs> speaking of happy and positive, <laughs> ooh, Dan Graff. Hey Dan. And a lot of people ask this oh, actually, because yeah? we talked about the original unaired pilot, which I've only seen, but I had to go to the 21st floor at the Disney channel building oh, to the and watch secret, it. They locked you they in. They locked me in the vault <laughs> and I had to watch it in the Disney vault. Everybody's asking. So, but what happens? No, am I, am I going to no, get no, in trouble no, but that's if what I they're show asking. everybody? They're saying, are you allowed to show the unaired pilot? And then the answer is, I don't know. I don't know if we are. I imagine not. Well, I, I'm going to. we're not allowed to I even mean, like show clips on this What happens if it show? went into the wrong hands well, like, and got I'm, put I'm, on the I'm wondering, YouTubes, I'm wondering you know? if we can do, I'm wondering. I love that we're on a podcast talking, talking about, about something we, we don't do. want. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> Very meta. Because the thing is, is the question, the answer is I don't know. But I would imagine the answer is no, we can't release the unaired pilot considering we can't even release clips on this show right. out of fear of, the good news you is, know, copyright yeah. issues. Right. But the thing is, we could do a Deadpool where you remember how like Ryan Reynolds was like, oh, Best fucking movie. I oh, love it's so that good. Movie. But do, you know the story behind that, right? Of I how don't. like he, so they were, the studio was going back and forth about whether they wanted to make the movie. They shot some like test footage. I'm going to butcher the details of this. So just bear with me if I get some of this wrong. Go on. But like they shot some test footage and they just were kind of doing the like studio thing where they were like, I don't know, like just dicking around with it. Right. So what Ryan Reynolds and like some of the people involved in it go, let's just put it out there. And it leaked. Ah. And they're very much like tongue in cheek about how like, yeah, I don't know how it oh, got out there. Oh, that's smart. And then they saw the fans response at Comic-Con about how much it blew up and how ravenous they were for Deadpool. And then that's what got the movie made is the fans response to this leaked footage. So basically you want us to take a leak. <laughs> I <laughs> sorry, mean, sorry, that was a dad joke. That, that was, was a Jerry Russo. I love that movie and I'm really happy that they did that. Yeah. Did that. I but think what that a great move, huh? It's smart. Because here's the thing. Studios can be way like overthink, overprotect like I'm certain shocked, things. Though. Like who cares if like that the unaired pilot's out? It's never going to air. It's right. not like it's going to, they're going to do another. Well, show, I'm going to look for it, you know? everybody. I'm going to try to find it. And if it mysteriously it, goes on YouTube, you know. Mickey knows where to find you. Mm -hmm. Disney. Disney. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't plan it. It happened. That was unplanned. Um, okay. I, do you the have a, only, I was just yeah. going to say this about Ryan Reynolds. I'm such a fan. Ryan, how are you, buddy? Okay. I'm just a huge fan of his. I love so it. Much. This has turned from a fan Q&A episode no, no, into a, 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 fan, a David's a fan, talk fan story. crush episode. Okay. Well, listen, <laughs> um, I, I, I can't believe that a studio didn't say, hey, Ryan Reynolds, but Deadpool, how, let's do this. He but did also, do, he did do, he was in Wolverine and he had, it was like the sword But he guy played, but that, he was Deadpool. Oh, that was Deadpool. That was Deadpool. But what a weird version of Deadpool. Yeah, I didn't, it took that, all the comedy out of it, which is what is so beautiful about that comic book character. That they, that they muted It's like he's, is he so aware and he's so like, Kind of making fun of the whole genre. I'm going to stop talking, but the opening credits, <laughs> well, when it then says- Then nobody will have anything to listen to if you stop talking. <laughs> okay. But the opening credits of Deadpool, when it, it says, you know, starring uh, and, you know, and yeah. whatever, a big headed actor, asshole, yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever it was, yeah. all the different things. I love oh, it. It was so funny. And okay. the Green Lantern references? Or, yeah, yeah, Green Lantern, Green Lantern. Which is another reason why they maybe were like, mm, let's yeah, not make this. Yeah, because like it didn't you know, go great with the, yeah. you know, the superhero leading and all God. that kind of stuff. But it but also too very different. Very I'm a different very way. big fan of Ryan Reynolds. So, all right, we got, we got Zach Baggins, Ryan Reynolds. If you're listening. Tom Cruise, TC. Tom Cruise. Well, none of them are listening to this. Oh my God. Um, okay, so, <laughs> all right, hold on. Well, that's my question to you. I know this is yeah, not a what? fan question. Top five man crushes. Hmm. Okay, so TC. Do you got a little... Verklempt, you got a little flummox see, there, honey. Uh, uh, Brian Reynolds. Okay. Tom Cruise, Ryan Reynolds. It, it used to be someone that I'm not going to say. Uh -oh. He's out. Oh, he's been canceled. Goodbye. Um, Canceled from your heart. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford, classic. He's Every old, guy. He's older though. <laughs> Harrison, okay, but Harrison Ford is, cla he's like a good, like pair of leather boots, a leather jacket. Yeah. He never goes out of style. We're talking about like, we, we idolize it. I mean, is this like a sexual thing? What's happening I don't here? know. Do you want to get in bed with <sighs> Harrison Ford? Who does I would do anything Who Harrison doesn't? Ford said. Right? Get in bed. Okay. I can't believe I said that um, on the podcast. Okay, I mean, hold I, on. I need two more, yeah? Yeah. Yes, you need two more. So we've got Ryan Reynolds, we've got Tom Cruise, we've got Harrison Ford. I'm going with Jason Bourne. 
Ooh. Not, not Matt, Matt Damon, Damon. But the character but Jason, Jason Bourne. Bourne. Yeah. Oh, I like it. I like um, it. And... Uh, uh, One more. Uh, I'm Batman. The Christopher... Christian Bale. Thank you Christian so much. Christian Bale. Our, our producer, Joe, saved our Thank dumb, you. dumb asses and yeah. let us know because our And if there's any like, other men that I'm attracted to, I'll let you know, Jen. Oh, you'll get a nice... Please do. I would like who, to say up to date. Who are your five girl crushes now? Five, you have oh, to come oh, up with them. my five girl crushes. Okay. It's going to be all my actor crushes yeah. for sure. Helen Mirren. Okay. Oh, my Amazing. God. Helen Mirren's my Helen, Harrison Ford. I would do anything Her Helen Mirren told me. Just the best. She's such a rock star. Uh, Helena Bonham Carter. Love Helena Bonham Carter. Um, Kate Blanchett. Yeah. God, a, there's so many I could go on I forever. have a man crush on Kate Blanchett. Too. Wow. No, I mean, uh, I, I like her. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. Um, one more. One more. There's so many, honestly. Know, like it's, it's hard. hard. It's right? hard. It's hard to fill those holes. Um, <laughs> I'm shocked, actually, that you haven't said someone from the past, like from the 40s or something. Catherine Hepburn. Well, there you go. I love Catherine Hepburn. Yeah. Man. But but if I could do a whole like 1940s and back list of girl crushes can, is, for sure. Ka Catherine Hepburn is a another oh, Betty Davis. They all they all did this. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, that was Dan's question about the original pilot uh, 20 years ago that we asked that question. <laughs> um, and then uh, we're having too much fun. We man. are. I, here's the thing: and is I people are enjoying I hope, that. I hope so that they good, enjoy right? us just shooting the shit because that's what we enjoy. Um, okay, so uh, I'm so sorry I did not get the name of this person. I'm an asshole. I'm so sorry. Um, what did you think of Alex and Mason's relationship? That's um, the question. As the this dad. Is the first time I met Greg, mm -hmm. I was sitting outside because we had little lunch tables outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had done a Disney interlude thing for like English TV, yeah. Disney something or other. And he came and he was going to do a guest thing. Mm -hmm. And I met him. He just was so polite. Yeah. I mean, the, he still is. Yeah. The, 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 it just was nice. He was sweet. And I, I, you know, I knew because he was walking with our executive producer that he was important to the, you know, to what was going to happen. Yeah. And, and I just gave him a little four and one on what was going on and everything. And it was, it was great. So I really felt like he was. Mason's character was so sweet and sincere yeah. and, and just Which couldn't like I, I feel like And loved yeah, Alex. And, yeah, yeah. and you really could see that. The chemistry between the two of them is really nice. I think it was a beautiful yes, I agree with all of that. I think it was a beautiful depiction of first love. Yeah. And I think that was lovely. And 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 what I loved about Greg when he came on is he he was so sweet. He was so genuine and so polite. Um but he also was so committed and cause he had a hard job. Like he had to do this weird kind of duality between being like the cute guy and the boyfriend and also doing all this werewolf kind of a, like stuff as well with the prosthetics and right. the teeth and the hair and but like wait a minute, wait all a minute. This let's stuff. talk about something. Okay. Okay. Greg is a certain body size. Mm -hmm. And when they put the, you know, who, when he was not, I mean, he did get, uh, werewolf makeup yeah but he didn't sometimes there were stunts and stuff and the stunt guy yeah was like eight feet taller than him you know which was really funny if you i guess but that's any matter. that's any stunt thing right like yeah. i always love when like you can tell when they cut to like a stunt. there's one thing there's one thing selena did and I, I remember going to the premiere to it and seeing it at the time and it drives me was this nuts the one where, where uh, uh it's the cinderella like, story cinderella, yeah, yeah we saw it at yeah, the, yeah, at the we, grove. yeah yeah we went to the grove for the the premiere and um, there's a scene where she's on stage and they have like the dancer double come in and she's doing like the cool dance or whatever. Right. And they superimposed, which I'm sorry to who did this poorly on the dancer, they Selena's face. Oh. And it like weirdly floats over the dancer's face. And the dancer also is like kind of built like Selena, but, but not, really. not really. Like it's kind of that weird stunt stunt person yeah, double I thing. I gotta go home and rewatch that some. Just that one scene where it's like, it, it's very odd. It's quick, but it's so, like, I found it so distracting because literally it's just like this weird, like, floating Selena head on this, like, dancer's body doing, like, all this stuff. That's so funny. It's amazing what they can do now, though. The the, the new uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah, the de-aging. Yeah, they, <clears throat> they've got Harrison Ford doing, 
you know, him now, yeah. and then they just make him look like he did. Well, they know? did that with like Robert Downey Jr. with like Iron Man. It's yes. really kind of spooky. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, all the deep fakes and all that stuff. The yeah. Morgan Freeman thing. You know, we're you it was know, the Morgan actors Freeman are thing becoming obsolete. Oh, you know? but here's the thing. This is my thought process on that, and I know nobody asked, but I'm going to give it anyway. Jen, what's your thought process on that? <laughs> oh, that was not supposed <laughs> to be baiting, but um, is. Because in one of the start, the newer Star Wars, they had a character that they brought back that yeah. passed away. Completely CGI. Completely CGI. Thing. Yeah. But here's the thing: is I think that there's something innately in us as human beings that we can tell. We can tell when something's not human. That there's not like a soul or whatever you want to believe in. Some kind of like anchoring, like human thing in there. We can tell. Yeah. And so anytime, and, and I think back to the movies where it's all been CGI or it's all been like motion capture, there's something as, as good as the technology gets, there's still something inhuman about it. And I think your brain kind of like clicks to that. Yes, I agree And I think that's you. why actors will never be obsolete because it's the connection is why we exist. I, I understand. And I, I hope that you're right. And I tell myself as I'm like, you'll always have a job. I will say this though, <laughs> as much as I agree with you. Yeah. The masses are playing these video games where but that's the characters, but I'm saying they're getting more used to that in the same way that in the video games, you shoot a hundred thousand people in two minutes yeah. were desensitized. You know, I mean, I don't want to get too deep into this, but if you watch those video games now, the, the people that you're looking at may, might not have a soul that you're seeing in their eyes. We're, we're, we're seeing that so much that we're getting used to that. I think, cause like, I know my, my brother's a big gamer. Yes. And he, he, he appreciates it, but I know if there's like a long, like cut, like story cut in a he video game, skip it. he's like, what the hell? I just want to go back to shooting people. Right. But you get but what I'm saying. No, I get what you're saying. Getting no, more used I, to I get what you're saying, but I also think that it serves different like desires, right? Is like, so video games is, is more of like, you know, participation, like you're in it, right? And a movie is more observational and more like internal and more that kind of thing. And I think with a movie, like something happens when you're not quite as involved, mm. you have more time to sit back and kind of notice that they're not. And I and I think also too, with video games, there's that expectation that there's gonna be kind of a disconnect. Yeah, that's true. Because the connection comes from being like a first person shooter or something. Jeez. That's well, an we shot question. Alex versus Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you, you want to uh, match things. So there mm -hmm. was two Alex's. Yes, of course, Selena had to do everything twice. Yeah. And she was exhausted that shit. There's a crane the, um, that the camera was on mm -hmm. that was digitally moved. So uh, Victor, our mm -hmm. director, w showed me that you couldn't, it was so precise, the same movement it yeah. did. So you can do a crane move and have Selena be, you know, good Selena, bad Selena yeah. in, the, in the thing. But it was so precise that you couldn't even do a clapboard yeah, yeah. for the matching and the syncing. You had to do a blip of light so that they could match it to oh, that exact right. frame. You know, I remember that. Which was super cool. Uh, okay, let's do another question maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we've got so many good questions. There was one, um, Kylie Meg. Sorry, Hi, this Kylie Meg. I know, this one doesn't really involve you, I'm sorry. Um, but it's, wow. the, it's, she says, we need a Harper and Alex spinoff show. Now, I don't know how true this is, but I was told that it was pitched to Selena. And I'll have to ask her this. I've actually never asked her this, but I was told that it was pitched to Selena to do a Harper Alex spinoff. And she said no. And, and cause she had a lot of other things going on. Sure. But when, when, when did that right, happen? Like after right Wizards, after, oh, after okay. Wizards. Um, and that that's what I was told. I don't know how true that is. I don't know if that really happened. I'm not sure if Selena even remembers well, that. It's almost like but that's guys, what I was told. Yeah, it's almost like you guys had a spinoff on the show when you went to your own apartment. But I you think know? they were setting up for that. That's mm. why somebody was like, oh yeah, they they thought about that and approached her before they like got into the process of right. it. And then, you know, like I said, she had, a, I, I get it. Like she had a million other things going on and she wanted to move forward. And, and honestly, at the time I wanted to move forward too. Yeah. So it just didn't make sense. Looking back, it would have been great. But the thing is, is like where we both were at our at that time. Like we just wanted to explore other things. Yeah, and also, I mean, listen. But they I'm, were, but it, it, they were, from what I was told, trying to set up for the potential yeah. of that. Well, clearly. But like I said, I don't know how true that was. Right. Well, I mean, they moved you guys into a, an apartment, and that's that's like you I know, said, the beginning that, that could a, have just been somebody bullshitting me. But uh, you know, who uh, knows? the um, the interesting thing is, and I'll ask you this question. I mean, 
I know we loved being on the show and playing these characters, but mm-hmm. I mean, there's a certain moment where you're like, I'm fucking done being this character. After a hundred episodes on. playing the same person. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it does as much as like, I love Harper and I know that you love playing Jerry too, because like once you play a character that long, you get to know them so well and they become part of who you are. I mean, Harper's still in there. Like there's certain things where I can snap into her so quickly. Cause I, I she's like a best friend or something. I mean, no pun intended, but like she is. But there comes a time where it's like you need some distance to appreciate it even more. And it, you just and again, it's, it's like, like I said, just exploring something different. Yeah. You know, that whole thing of like, I don't it's not that I don't love doing this, but it's just like it becomes monotonous. Listen, what a wonderful like, problem to have. To yeah, no like, kidding. I've played this character so long, you know, like but, what a I mean, blessed actor you look at, problem. You look like, at shut the, the hell up. Us. People on, on shows that go forever, like Grey's Anatomy or yeah. ER and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Which I've done both of. <laughs> How you I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna drop hey, the one. There for you that go. One. Uh, I had to say on ER, Doctor Rosgotra, and uh, I'm forgetting her name, but she was the actress from Bend It Like Beckham. Yeah, yeah. Um, so sweet and so nice. But they were yeah. doing a huge long oneer, as they do, and mm-hmm. a oneer, by the way, is usually like a on a stead cam. Yeah, you know, people do, no cut. It's just a lot of people walking and talking and going around. And in the middle of the oneer, I had to say. Uh, Dr. Rosgotra, my wife needs you, you know? And I was like so nervous. I was so nervous. And before, as they were doing the tape, I was like, Dr. Rosgotra, Dr. Rosgotra, oh. Dr. In my mind. And then when but I came up- your brain is going to be like- I was like not going to miss this up. So I went up and I did it like this. Dr. Rosgotra, my wife needs you. I just was like, I'm going to say it and not mess it up. But it's hard when you have a line <laughs> in the middle of those big long scenes and, yeah. and people have these monologues and, and you just have like one or a few words and you're the like, The last thing you want to do please. is mess that up. What I didn't realize, because I have actor brain and like nurse brain, right? Like, like I never thought of them kind of commingling. But since I started nursing, like I'll have medical auditions and the dialogue's so easy for me to get down now. Cause I'm like, oh yeah, I know what that is. I know like, cause you like, I've heard from other actors, what's hard to get down about it is you don't have a point of reference for it. For it's it's interesting. There's that. certain certain pilots where you're doing a doctor, you're doing something where you have to say technical terms. I, mm-hmm. I had an audition um, where I had to say, uh, you know, get the defibrillator. We have to intubate. And I, you know, I'm, defibrillator is where you shock the yeah. person. And people on I, shows, by the way, it drives me nuts. They always do it wrong. It's always when people flatline and that's not when you defibr- defibrillate. When? You do, there's a certain heart rhythm that you do it for. Well, like tell us. It, it, usually it's, it's of course now I'm on the spot, so I'm going to get it wrong. Sorry. But there's, I, a, certain, I, there's just, a certain arrhythmia that you shock back into system because it, it's the it's the muscle of the heart. Everyone's like, again. So but like the muscle so, of the so, heart. Now, first of all, you have to be skin on the on the uh, paddles, well, right? Yeah, yeah. But, well, there's there can be gel or things like that. But usually the way that they do it, like at my hospital, they have, when someone's coding or something, we'll put like a- um, And coding means they're dying yeah, or they're dead? Yeah, well, they've lost pulses or um, respiration. Okay. So they, they stopped breathing or their heart stopped working appropriately. It doesn't mean they flatlined. That's a certain kind of like coding, but their heart can be going too fast. Basically, they're not perfusing or breathing correctly. Got it. So what we'll do is we'll put pads on the front and on the back, and that'll deliver the shock. So it's not the like rub them together with the gel and like- Got stamp it. them like you see on the show, which they always do when they flatline, which like I said, drives me nuts because that's, you just murdered, a, you've just committed murder right. and if you do that. And they're showing it wrong. I mean, it's They're, sh- they're showing it all wrong, but but it's more dramatic. Right, And also too, CPR in shows, sorry, I'm going on a total like tangent. No, this is important. But CPR in shows drive me nuts because they're always just like, we're doing it. You really gotta you go. You gotta like crack you ribs. Go you gotta get but in there. Wasn't it like, X amount of compressions to a, a, yeah. a breathe. Mm-hmm. You know, you make sure the head is back so the the pipe yeah. is open, the windpipe mm-hmm. is open, and all that. Yeah. So, head tilt, you, how many lift. Yeah. how many compressions to a, a, a mouth blow? It's every thirty compressions to two breaths. Got it. But t- they actually say, like the American Heart Association says, to not do the breaths anymore. That's not as important as doing the compressions. The compressions, right? Um, so the compressions are the most important part. See, Jen, I, I know you're like, oh, I know this is so boring for them, but it's fascinating to me that. You, I get emotional again. Oh, no. That you were That's there really in your job saving people's lives. You bring back people from the fucking dead. That's intense. Well, but it's with a team of people. It's I like understand, but you're myself. part of that fucking team. I'm over there, you know, <laughs> with you, taking care of Tony on the beach. Well, you're but making you're living there. people happy. Uh, yeah, I, I, I get it, but yeah. it's just amazing. And and thank you for well, doing that. I it's, appreciate you know, and, that. And during the pandemic, you're on the front line with everybody, you know, taking care of what was going on. It's, it's, 
not to say that there still isn't pandemic stuff happening. Yeah, but, but thankfully, oh like we're, we're on the other side of it, you know, so that's nice. But I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> I appreciate you, Jen, and thank you for, for doing that. I I just wanted to go on a tangent about how medical shows need to get better. But I'm like, well, well, my, my question is this. There's always a medical consultant. Are they crafty every time they have a code on these shows? That's what I want to know. I was going to say that as well. But now here, I've, where did I, they go? I, I saw or read something where a lot of people's medical knowledge mm -hmm. is coming from these shows. No, it is. is scary, no, you know? th and the scary thing is, is we've had several times where like we'll have patients that pass out or they have a seizure or like something happens that they don't need compressions. They still have a pulse, but nobody does a pulse. You're supposed to start with a pulse check. If somebody's lost pulses, you can't feel a pulse. And that's if you know how to find a pulse, not if like, well, I can't find it. Let's jump on their chest. But what's happening is people are seeing this on the shows of like the moment someone loses consciousness, oh, we do CPR. So they're doing CPR on people that they shouldn't be doing CPR on. So we've had someone that recently that had, uh, I think, yeah, she had a seizure and the person didn't know how to identify that that was a seizure versus losing pulses. So they like cracked, she was this poor little old lady, they like, cracked like multiple ribs on oh, her God. because they were like doing the Ricky rescue thing where they were really like jumping in there. And it was like, you know, so there is a, there is a need to re-educate when it's appropriate, how to best do it, yeah. when it's not appropriate, that kind of thing. Because there is this whole like thing, you know, too. And then there's people that are like, you know, going, oh, they can't breathe. Let's put a pen in their neck. And it's like, don't do that, please, God. I'm not yeah. going to put any pens in people's necks. Although with that said, yes. I did but a movie. But a great episode with, of Grey. Yeah, but I yeah. did a movie with John Ritter. Nice. And he, Terror Track, and he stabbed me in the neck with a pen. But he wasn't trying to save you. It doesn't sound no, like no. He's trying to hurt me. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I was like, if you're going for the for this, uh, if but you're going for the jugular, then that sounds like he's trying to kill you. We all appreciate you. Um, well, now you just make me uncomfortable. Yeah. I appreciate you saying no. this. And I'm let's sorry I put on. you on blast. Okay, let's no, 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 talk. Wizards very sweet. of Waverly Pod, it's everybody. A, it's a sweet blast. It's a sweet blast. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so um, what is the question like you get asked all the time? Like, what do you think your most like common question is? Well, the one thing, and I, I, I other I than do you say, still talk to Selena? <laughs> I get that one all the time. You know, I have to say that I've been asked several times, like, you know, people are like, hey, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. And then they're like, so. What should she call social security and Selena, number? And I'm just like, I'll stop you right there. You, yeah. you talk to her. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to pass on no, that. That's don't not speak for her. You know, if, if you want to communicate with her, you can. And my brother Peter dealt with that on 21 Jump Street. Oh, sure. Johnny Depp and, yeah. you know, everybody's like, hey, what's going on? With that was Johnny Depp drop. Um, but I, I just, I don't know. I guess if you experience working or being friends with someone who's super famous, mm -hmm. then people will come to you and ask that. But the, the thing that people are, people will go, ah, are you? And I go, yes. You want to take a picture? I go right to the photo. Yes. Where's your phone? Take a picture. Yeah, yeah. And like, thank you so much. And you know, uh, but I, they go, are you from wizards? And I go, yeah, I played the mom. And they always go, no, you were the dad. Oh, that's a cute joke. way to approach it. My, I've said that so many times. My wife is like, uh, okay. Yeah. No, she, I entered, she, I still make her laugh. I think that's a, a good thing. Well, it's over if you don't make her laugh anymore. I, I have to say the the thing that people say to me is, uh, you were my childhood. I get that one a lot too. And it's every time, no matter how many times I've heard it, it's still one of the sweetest things people say. I think. <sighs> Fuck, I just keep crying. Okay, so no, I, in my so small sweet. town that I live in, someone it's came up to me. It's warming my cold, dead heart. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody came up to me and said that they were uh, a therapist. Yeah. And that uh, he he was working with someone uh, who was a young woman who yeah. uh, had a really hard time with her family and her dad and all that. And she said, I just wish my dad was like Jerry Russo. Oh, David. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, so that made me feel really good. God, and no one, good no one, no one divulged any information. I didn't know who the everyone. Person everyone was at followed all. HIPAA regulations. Yeah, it HIPAA, was all okay. exactly. And HIPAA is <laughs> the thing that you're, you're, you're technically, technically, your doctor is not allowed to talk about to release any, medical information yeah. or personal information exactly. about your medical which needs, which is important or, because important. then you have a safetyness, yeah. you have a comfortableness with the doctor. What's well, your right as a human being? But if you talk about hurting yourself or anyone else, yeah. there's a HIPAA oath that you have to report that right yes yeah yeah we're, we're mandatory reporters got it yeah yeah so uh i love listen my dad for the kids that don't know was famous very famous and and funny if they've and been listening at all they know <laughs> but they should have known before come on he was he loved his fans 
He loved people. Why wouldn't you? Gym- well, some people are like, eh, I never. You I'm know, eating. Don't leave me alone. I never, I'm famous, but don't look at me. You I know? never understood that because to me, like, I understand like the eating dinner with your family or something or family time, things like that. Like, I understand that. Like, I, like I get a little frustrated when people like come up in the middle of dinner when I'm with my family and yeah. I haven't seen because because usually I don't see my family very much since they live across like across the country, right? And um, or not like. They live. Fa- they, we live far, right. so it's like when you're if with I'm a, them, you want to have your time with time. them. But after dinner, no problem, yeah. you know. But it, it's, um, and that's just a common courtesy thing for anybody. But the thing that I never understand about people that are like rah, fans, they're just rah, whatever. <laughs> um, they always have flatulence for some reason. Um, but is the fact that it's like how special is it? Because this is the thing that still blows my mind after all these years. Is I love acting so much, and I never considered getting to share it with people and having it mean anything to anyone else. And I, I don't know why it never crossed my mind that anyone would see it. Yeah. Um, and so to be a part of something that, that people, that it meant something to somebody but when also, it means so much to me is like to have that mutual, which is wonderful love and, and, and appreciation for a story and characters is yeah. just incredibly impactful. There's two things that I'm thinking about, like when yeah. you go to an audition, you do your thing and then that's, there's nothing else you can do. Yeah. Your job is that's done. It. Yeah. It's up to them now. Or when you do a show, your job, your job is really done. Cause it's out there in the ether. Now you, you know, it's, it, there's nothing well, it doesn't else belong you really... to you anymore. Right. As an right. actor, like you truly have to let it go and release it. Like with any art form, like with a painting, a song, whatever, once you put it out to the world, it's the world. It's not yours anymore. And then you can move on to the next thing. Now, there was one time I was on the phone and I was having an argument with my daughter and whatever it was, like she was out late or something or she was, you know, whatever. And then someone just came up to me and was like, oh my God, you're Jerry Russo. Can I have a pic? And I was like, what? And I said, hold on. I said, when I'm done arguing with my daughter, I'll take a picture. I promise. <laughs> but let me finish my, you know, like, but then that person is that's, like, David Deloise is a fucking dick, you know? Well, but that's, here's the thing. is like, just, there's a difference between appreciating people who appreciated a role that you played or, or, or something or a show that you were involved in. And, and like our, our fans from Wizards are so incredible. But there's also too, like you're a human being and you have boundaries and sometimes it's not the best time. And how could they possibly know that? Right. Now, you know? So, if, th- so and how can they know that if you don't communicate it? So if you see someone famous, do you say something? I'm going to answer the question first. <laughs> I was recently uh, 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 somewhere with my wife and yeah. I saw, I don't even know his name, but The Punisher. Oh, John Barron. Oh, I love him. So oh, he's we were great. Just, we were just walking by each That's other. That's a man crush of mine. And okay, there you he's go. A good one. And I, I, I just was like, I, I love your work. Mm-hmm. You know, as we were walking, he's like, "Thanks, man, I appreciate it." And then I look, I looked at, I turned around, and he was walking like the Punisher, like you know what I mean. Very, he was trudging. You know what I mean. Yeah, he was, yeah. I was like, "That's cool." He's strutting. Yeah, yeah. Now, if I see someone that I like, yeah. I will tell them. I will say, "I appreciate your work." You know, thank you. It's meant a lot to me. You know. You know, I. I don't have to take a picture with them. Yeah. Like, I mean, some I'm people a like, little, if Zach Baggins was here, oh I'd take a picture But that's with what's him. weird. Is like the people, there's a difference between the people you appreciate and admire and the people you geek out over. I remember, I'll answer your question and then I'll tell you like a really dorky memory of mine. Um, I was, again, I was a very weird kid. I'll preface it with that. But usually I don't. I don't like to approach people. I like to, I think it's interesting to see what they look like in real life. And, and that's enough for me. I, I don't like, I've had, I've had experiences where I met people and they weren't what I hoped they were. Ah, and me so too. I just, I, I just would rather not know. Yeah. So talking about the difference between like geeking out versus like people that you admire or things like that. Um, and if there's somebody like Margot Martindale was an actress that did this, like in this, I'm going to get real bougie in, um, Paris Jetamine, that movie of all those short films about Paris. Yeah. She had this, I don't know what it was. And I'm going to cry. Huh, I'm going to cry thinking about it, but it affected me so much. And for me as an actor, I know I would want people to tell me, but it's this, it's this beautiful short. And this is, I'm going to explain it because I like of why I'm crying, but it's this beautiful short about this woman who's she, I think she's like a, like a, like a post woman or like, which is probably not the right term for it, but like she, she delivers mail and she saved up her money her whole life to go to Paris and she realizes when she's there, God, like it just affected me. But like she realizes when she's there that she's just wishes that she had some, she's waited her whole life to go and she just wishes that she had somebody to share it with. And it was, and, and the whole thing is just her and, and walking around Paris and voiceover. It's the whole thing. It's so simple. Mm. And, and she was so just impactful without saying 
a damn thing. And so like those are the times where I'll go up to an actor because I know from an, one actor to another, like it means so much to, to impact somebody like that. Of course. But on a different note. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just, so for, who, who, for the people listening, we're both <laughs> sobbing over here. Not sobbing. We're welling. It's the we're welling. Episode. We're welling. It's, it's the guy crush. I really want to see it's that. It's the guy now. crush. No, no, no. I'll send it to you. It's stunning. It's the guy crush tear crying episode. Um, but um, the, we're geeking out on somebody. I was at the premiere for something during Wizards. And I saw James Lipton, who was the host for Inside the Actor Studio. Yeah, of and course. And I, I literally, they were freaking out over like all the stars and stuff. Oh, thank you. Um, Joe just passed us a, a paper towel for oh our my God, I did have, Oh, And Jen, our by the way, just shared it because of I'm course, crying too. Of course. Um, but um, I know I, I shoved mine back down in the in the white room that I shove all my emotions <laughs> since COVID into. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so you saw so we, Lipton. I saw James Lipton and literally there were like other stars or whatever at this premiere. And, um, and, and I just remember like, I, I couldn't, like, I wasn't that excited about them, but I saw James Lipton and I was like, oh my God, it's James Lipton. <laughs> and James everyone Lipton. was like, who? <laughs> I was like the guy with the host with the cards and Will Ferrell and uh, any, he, any, he, he, he's like inside the actor's studio. Everyone was like, you're so, you're such a weird 14 year old. Uh, Why are you so excited about this old? So good, and he guy would ask, with the thing for people who don't know the inside of the actor's studio. Oh, he would best. always ask the last question, "What would you say to God?" or something like that. Or what's his question at the end? Oh, wait, hold on, Doesn't we gotta find would, this out. We gotta find this out. What it was, James Lipton's like. While things. you're finding that, I'm gonna yeah. tell you that I went to He's High there. School Musical two. We went to premiere. all of the High School yeah, Musical everything. But, but I that saw was the time we were on, Disney. Edward James almost. Okay. And I went up to him and I was like, man, I love your work. You're just so mm-hmm. amazing. And he said, I love your work too. Oh. Isn't that See, but amazing? again, from an actor to an actor, it means so much. Like, to- I, I was like, how the, I, I think I looked at him and go, how the fuck do you know who I am? Yeah. You know? Okay. Okay. So we're going to wrap it up. Yes. And this is the perfect way to Q&A it. Oh, yes. Though, even though I, I, fans, I'm just going to oh say, God, we're I'm gonna sorry. ask this, each other the James Lipton this question. This Q&A has gone off the rails. We asked some fan questions, but we got very distracted but and here's all over the, the place. Thing, Jen, but hopefully you've still enjoyed it. I'm a fan it. of yours I'm a fan and of I asked too. you some questions. Oh, I'll, I'll look at what so, you did there. Yeah. Look <laughs> at Took you. It out of big. You did. So I I'm okay. What okay. is the question? Okay, all right. So the famous James Lipton inside the actor's studio question is if heaven exists, what would you like God to say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Good job. That's a really good answer. Yeah, I was gonna make a joke. You're the number one son. Um, my dad used to well, say that maybe, in front of me and my brother. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop it. Yeah. My, mine's, I mean, mine's not too dissimilar. It would be, you left the world better than you found it. Cause that's my, that's my goal in life is I just want to leave the world better. I, I want the world to be a little bit better after I leave. Awesome. That's it. Oh All right. God. Well, we're okay. not going to the pearly gates, hopefully, anytime <laughs> soon. So I know, right? Hold on, God, please. Um, all right. Well, guys, thank you so much. And 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 continue to like go to, you know, all of our social media stuff and give us questions because yes. we do these fan like pod and and on <laughs> Spotify and why well, didn't mean tag everything. Yeah, and our Patreon is there that meant, we do extra bonus content. That's with, true. Right? That's true. I mean, you're doing a great job of plugging every platform. Thank but you, I Jessica. just meant I can also do my movie trailer voice. What should I say? Tell me. No, I just meant say like go to our socials and give us questions for when we do this Q&A episode. I meant to say, go to our socials and give us questions for our <laughs> Q&A episodes of Wizards of Waverly Pod. That was beautiful. I love it. And on that, we're out. We're out. <laughs> You're out. <laughs> I'm out. Stop talking. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this week's episode of Wizards of Waverly Pod. And if you want clips from this week's episode, head on over to the Podco YouTube channel. The link is in the description to follow. And if you just can't get enough wizards in your life, I know I can't, then head on over to our Patreon and follow for exclusive weekly bonus content. The link is also in the description. I'll see you next week.